Hello, my name is Brian Zangi from Nestle Purina, and thank you very much for uh, listening to my talk today. I'm going to be talking about feline hydration, specifically how a water supplement can be used as a hydration solution for cats. Uh, very briefly, I'll go into a couple of slides on some key definitions that I'll be using during the course of the presentation. I'll also then go into two studies that we published in 2018 on our water supplement research in cats, and then provide a, a brief summary based on how this data can be applied in a clinical setting. So we traditionally will have used water uh, or wet food uh, or diets enriched with sodium to have an a strategy for increasing total water intake for a cat. But this research now begins to indicate that we can have another approach by leveraging a water supplement for stimulating or increasing water intake. So some of the definitions I was referring to, I'll be using, I'll be showing some data where I'm uh, describing it as liquid intake. This is, or also free liquid intake, the water that's drank out of the bowl. Now this can be both tap water or drinking of the nutrient water or the water supplement. And that differs specifically from uh, data where it will be total water intake. And this is uh, the combination of a uh, tap water uh, or the water component of the water supplement, taking the dry matter uh, components out, and then adding that to the metabolic water, uh, as well as water consumed as dietary moisture. So those three components added up to uh, what we refer to total water intake. Now, with regards to the units of the data, some of the more historical data would report water intake with regards to just total milliliters per day and not taking into account uh, on a kilogram body weight basis. Uh, more recent studies have started to provide this understanding of total water intake and reporting it on a kilogram body weight basis. So for dry food, we typically see in the literature cats are drinking uh, 20 to 30 milliliters of total water from all three sources per day, as opposed to wet, in food, wet food, where it's about 35 milliliters per kilogram body weight per day. And then the final set of definitions, the nutrient water that we evaluated in this study contains what are referred to as organic osmolites. Uh, so electrolytes are considered osmolites, amino acids, uh, other molecules or nutrients like sugar, glycerol, those are also considered osmolites. But the, the glycerol, the uh, sugar, amino acids are specifically organic osmolites. And those are the nutrients that we wanted to use in this water supplement and not uh, electrolytes specifically. So when I'm referring to nutrient enriched water, it's because these, these nutrients are, are, are nutrient, or I'm sorry, are organic osmolites that we're using to support increased water intake and then once in the body uh, absorption into the cells. So the the first study, just very briefly, our key objective was we wanted to evaluate this water supplement offered ad libitum to the cat. And if it was offered to the cat, would they enhance or would they have enhanced liquid intake with the nutrient enriched water supplement versus uh, having access to only tap water, and then uh, what if intake was elevated with the nutrient water, would this be a sustained level of intake over a prolonged period of time? And we're defining that as, as two months. Our preliminary work uh, indicated that over a two-week period, we were seeing increased intake with the nutrient water, but we wanted to evaluate uh, on a longer-term basis. And then finally, does this enhance liquid intake of a nutrient water translate into increased uh, or influence the urine parameters of these healthy cats where they're consuming a dry food. And this data was uh, published as our first study in 2018. So very briefly on the study design, we had one week of baseline intake where we were getting uh, water intake when they only had access to the tap water, as well as their, their food consumption to allow us to track dietary moisture uh, water intake, as well as their metabolic water intake. Then we move into the, the 
week and a, one week, one and a half weeks of the start of the test phase where again, we were able to measure total water intake because we measured uh, food on a daily basis as well as their, their liquid intake. So for the nutrient water group, they only had access to the nutrient water or the water supplement uh, and substituted that out for their tap water. And the reason being is that we knew from the preliminary data that the nutrient water acceptance was very high. So there was very little concern in removing tap water and replacing it with nutrient water uh, versus a control group where they had tap water over the entire course of the study. Now, when we go from after the first week and a half into this, the final six and a half weeks, uh, we're looking at a three bowl feeding option where they have now been given their tap water back. Uh, so they have access to the tap water and the nutrient water and their food. And the reason why we evaluated this is the food was not measured on a daily basis because the cats were group housed. And so they had ad libitum to access to the food that was in a separate location. Uh, but on the automated uh, food measuring system, there were two scales. One had tap water and the other side had the nutrient water. So now we could be able to delineate how much of their total liquid intake was tap water and how much of it was their nutrient water. Uh, we um, Now through... Uh, this particular study, again, they had access to the nutrient water and the tap water all day long. Uh, and we had made sure that the, the water bowls were filled so they had uh, free access to it uh, and could drink as much as they wanted. So to summarize the results, uh, the, looking at this, uh, this, the red table on the bottom, when we report the data as total milliliters per day, uh, very typical in terms of the control group that was consuming the tap water, 90 milliliters per day, very similar to what we see with cats drinking regular tap water when they're eating a dry food diet, it's approximately 90 to 100 milliliters per day. But with the, tap, with the nutrient water group, we're getting a 67% increase where the total average total liquid intake was 148 milliliters. Now, when we convert that to a kilogram body weight basis, of just the, the free liquid that's ingested during that first week and a half of the test phase, 20 mil versus 33 milliliters per kilogram body weight. And then if we, because we measured all three water sources, we're able to calculate daily total water intake uh, during that first week and a half. And that's where we get this 25.1 milliliters of total water or 37.5 milliliters of total water uh, for the nutrient water group. Uh, and in all of those cases, being significantly higher um, liquid consumption uh, with the test group. Now, how does that translate into the urine output parameters? Uh, we can see urine output volume is 15 milliliters per kilogram body weight versus the control, which is 10 milliliters per day. Uh, then this also, not only are they having more urine output, but they're also more diluted urine, 0.04 for the nutrient water group versus 0.054. So a significant increase in urine dilution. Going into the second study. So because uh, we had some cats that really, really liked the nutrient water, uh, we felt it was really important to understand how liquid intake would be impacted by a very specific dose of the nutrient water. And then how do different doses impact urine output parameters? And so that was the basic premise of this is to look at incrementally increasing levels of the dose over a period of time, in this case, either 10 or 17 days. And then does that increasing level of availability of the nutrient water translate to increasing changes in their urine output parameters? And this study was also published in 2018. So the go through the experimental design so you can uh, have an understanding of how we defined the dose. During week one, or I should say during period one, we uh, all cats were uh, had access to their tap water and their food. So each cat was its own water intake control. And from that individual cat's tap water intake during period one, we we're able to determine what the 1x dose would be during period two. 
So for example, if a cat on average drank 100 milliliters per day of tap water during the baseline period one, then they would also receive 100 milliliters of the nutrient water during period two, uh, as well as free access to as much uh, tap water as they wanted to consume. So that's where the 1x comes from, 100 milliliters of nutrient water, which is real relative to their 100 milliliters per day of tap water intake. And so if you take that forward, 1.5 being 150 milliliters as an example per day, and then 2x, 200 milliliters per day of the nutrient water uh, during, that, during those different test periods. Uh, again, this, for the nutrient water group, that is a three-bowl feeding option, so they had access to the tap water all day long. The nutrient water was divided where they got half of that dose volume in the morning and the other half in the afternoon. And then, uh, yeah, so we'll go through. So that's how the dosing structure works. The nutrient water was exactly the same in the second study as, the, as we used in the first study, so all exactly same liquid composition there with organic osmolites being glycerol and amino acids from whey and the, the poultry flavor. So here's the, the data with regards to total liquid ingested. Uh, we can see that the tap water consumption is very consistent over the course of the entire study. And when you look at the nutrient water group uh, during the first test phase, which is period two, we're seeing an uh, an average increase that's fairly consistent with the 1x dose of nutrient water provided along with the tap water. And then when you go to period three, the dose is increased, which you can see on the right-hand side, the 1x dose on average for the nutrient water group is goes from 26 milliliters in period two to 39 in period three and up to 52 milliliters per kilogram body weight per day. And so with those increasing doses, we're seeing an increasing level of total liquid being drank. Now, how that translates or to better understand what that total liquid intake reflects, because they also had access to tap water, this graph shows us that that increase in total liquid intake on the left reflects an increased level of because of their high preference for the nutrient water. And so then this graph shows that, that their tap water consumption is going down uh, and is a smaller portion of that total liquid intake. And we feel like this is it's also important because this demonstrates that when the cats don't have access to the nutrient water, they are still consuming tap water over the course of the remainder of the day. And then how this translates into their urine measures, this graph uh, in the urine-specific gravity, so no difference during baseline, all bas basically the same. But then as the nutrient water is added and they're increasing that intake of nutrient water and their total liquid consumption is increasing, we're getting a corresponding dilution of the urine-specific gravity. And I don't have the graph on here, but indicated on the bottom, there's a very similar response in terms of uh, except in an increasing volume of urine void of urine output uh, that's occurring with the increased availability and increased intake of the nutrient water. So we're getting uh, increased dilution, more liquid they consume, and we're also getting more urine output. This is the uh, data where we took all of the data and we we tried to model it to understand how the response would could be applied clinically if we were trying to predict. Uh, the particular dose for that individual pet relative to their urine measures. And so on the first graph, we've got urine output versus urine-specific gravity. Clearly, uh, we can see this nice curvilinear response. As we have a more dilute urine, we're going to see this corresponding increase in the urine output volume to be able to predict approximately where that, that uh, value is. Now, if we go to the curve on the left, or I'm sorry, on the right, so if we take an average uh, target urine-specific gravity of 0.035 as something that we would say, you know, we would want to be ideal for dilution purposes, healthy uh, level of, of urine concentration, that then translates into approximately 36, 37 milliliters of total water intake per day on all three liquid, all, all three sources of water. And then how that becomes 
uh, where we could translate that into the into estimating how much urine they would be voiding every single day based on these different intake levels. I've got here uh, on the on the line. If we use that same level from the previous graph, 36, 37 milliliters of total water per day, that translates into approximately 15 milliliters per kilogram of urine output per day. And then on the bottom, I've got it bracketed to be able to show relative to the published literature, where our control data is with tap water consumption, how that translates into total water output, and then how we can then infer approximately how much urine the cat is producing per day as we try to define where's the right dose that we want to be in to get a desired effect of how much flushing of the, the bladder we would want to produce uh, to get that Im improved hydration effect for that particular patient. So with that, I'll summarize. Uh, again, we're demonstrating that with increased level of the liquid dose, we get an increased uh, intake of total water as well as increased drinking. And this results in a greater urine dilution factor. Um, the table here shows that you know, with dry food traditionally, 20 to 30 milliliters of total water versus wet food at 35. And with the use of this water supplement, we can be at or a much better level of total liquid or total water intake relative to, to wet food consumption. And clearly, uh, there's many opportunities where a cat would benefit from increased liquid intake and a liquid supplement like this could provide that benefit through looking for increased total hydration, increased urine volume output, or dilution of the urine parameters. So, um, so uh, evidence that urine, uh, water supplement is a viable strategy to wet food uh, or uh, a higher sodium diet, which trigger thirst sensation. And so with that, I'll conclude. And I'd like to say thank you very much for listening to the presentation. Um, have a good day. Thank you.